Hey YouTube, it's Mark here. Just wanted to bring you a short message today. Um, had a problem these last couple of days um, and quite a heated uh, debate yesterday with somebody who professes to be a Christian um, but is clearly a false convert. Um, and actually during the conversation that I had with them, and it started out innocently enough, we were talking about salvation uh, and hell, and it started out innocently enough. But the second that I outlined uh, salvation and the ultimate destination of the saved and unsaved person, uh, this caused this person real, real problems straight away. Um, and actually it showed just how... Uh, non-existent actually not poor but non-existent their foundations were and actually that they weren't even a christian and they openly admitted that at the end of the conversation so it was actually this conversation that that really revealed them to be using the title as of a christian but not actually being a christian and uh that's what happened uh during this conversation and uh just to put this into context um Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. If you're not saved, when you die and face judgment, Jesus will say that he doesn't know you, that he's never heard of you. That you can pay all the lip service you like and you can call yourself a Christian. But if he doesn't know you, if you're not saved, your destination is hell. It's as black and white as that. And if you're saved, and if you have Jesus standing for you, your destination is heaven. And when I challenged this guy, well, well not challenged, when I, when, I, when I explained that to him, as a natural part of my conversation, it wasn't anything that, that, that I thought would be a problem. You know, it's just, it's an obvious, I mean, scripture refers to this, countless verses um when i spoke this as naturally as i'm speaking right now uh this guy was visibly disturbed by what i said because he then made the logical deduction from that that it was highly likely that his wife was in hell that his parents and grandparents people that he cherish cherished uh and loved and this is the key part people that were good. Now this person, as we started talking, uh, identified salvation only on the basis of good works. He refused outrightly, not just slightly or, or wasn't sure, he refused outrightly that, um, that you needed Jesus ultimately to get into heaven. He... Uh, stands very firmly on the fact that if you're good, if you've done enough good in your life, you'll get in. That's your criteria. So when I then challenged him and said, okay, so what about atheists? If they're good, do they go to heaven? And his answer was a yes. Not a, there wasn't a debate about it. He just said yes. And then I said to him, okay, what about Muslims? Do they go to heaven if they're good enough? Yes. I said the same about Buddhists and, uh, you know, I just reeled off a list of, you know, heretical religions and, and Mormons and all this kind of stuff. Yes, yes, yes. I'm sorry, you don't get into heaven for being good. You don't, you don't get into heaven for that. And people who believe that, uh, at best, <laughs> I don't know, maybe they're Catholic or something, at worst they're, um, just hopelessly lost and it, and it really showed me that this guy has uh, only a philosophical uh, understanding of of life and death which as we know means absolutely nothing um, and it just became a very difficult conversation because we we suddenly found ourselves at completely opposite ends of the spectrum you know I'd told him something which had automatically put him against me because he felt that he would see for example his wife in heaven even though that I know um, pretty much 95% sure because I knew this person also that um, that she wasn't saved you know and it pains me to know that and it disturbed him to know that and the net result of that was that he then uh 
caved in completely uh, and revealed uh, his exact nature, which is a false convert and an agnostic as well. He'd been an agnostic prior to getting saved, and this was last year. Um, now, he says he was saved. And it's easy for us to say with our mouths, you know, to confess, but God tries the heart. And even even the words he used uh, when, when he recapped that situation are questionable because he quote-unquote invited Jesus into his life. He didn't, uh, you know, admit that he was a sinner. He didn't admit that he needed Jesus Christ to stand for him. He, he admitted nothing of true biblical salvation. He just invited Jesus into his life, which, I'm sorry, that means nothing. It doesn't mean nothing. I mean, I can say that, and it means nothing. It's not accepting, you know, the situation as it needs to be. It's just simply, I mean, that's just lip service. You know, I can invite anybody into my life. You know, whether it's Jesus or anybody else, I can invite anybody. It's not, that's not salvation. That's not salvation. And even if his words were bad, but his heart was true, you know, there, there are a lot of hallmarks of, of uh, false converts you know, and this, this particular guy, there was nothing, uh, even from day one. There was no immediate change. There was no joy. Uh, there was no fruit. There was no uh, zealousness for Christ. There was nothing. There was nothing, and there's been nothing. And if anything, that's trailed off in the last six or seven months anyway. So it's not even that he's a backslidden Christian. He's a... I don't know. I don't even know how you, you know, categorise this person you know, a backslidden false convert would be the only way that I could possibly describe it. You know, and again, you know, as we started to talk about uh, basic Bible doctrine, and I'm talking as basic as it gets, and also basic narratives. I mean, this this guy uh, then started to say things like that he didn't believe in the, the flood and Noah, and he started to question how the boat must have been huge, and he started saying... How did they get all the animals on? Who built it? How long did it take? Um, and he started to reject um, pretty much everything. Pretty much everything. Um, and in my opinion, when you become a Christian, one of your overriding desires is to read the Bible. And when you read it, you will get convicted of its truth. Uh, this guy, uh, I don't know how much of the Bible that he read, but he's just paying it a lip service. You know, he wants to call himself a Christian and go to church and take advantage of all the services that they offer. You know, like a free taxi service, which is what he's been doing. Uh, you know, coffee and tea afterwards, just so he can sit there and, and usually fall asleep in the services, from what I saw. Um, I just found it staggering, really, that this guy that I thought that was saved, and I took great joy in that when I heard about it. I really did rejoice because, again, I don't want anybody to go to hell. I don't want you, the watcher, to go to hell, I don't want uh, my family to go to hell, I don't want my friends, I don't want anybody that I see in the streets go to hell, no one, not a single person, so when I, when I really came to the realisation that this guy uh, was a false convert, was not saved, I then found myself in that horrible situation where my heart was grieved for him, and I did give him the truth, I told him the plan of salvation, I gave him the true plan of salvation, you know, and as we read in Galatians 4.16, am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? And this is what I gave him. I gave him the truth from the Bible. It wasn't my opinion that I gave him. I gave him the, the true plan of salvation. I told him of hell. And I told him about sin. And I told him, you know, everything that he needs to do in order to get saved. So, you know, I admonished him. Um, I reproved him. And I rebuked him because he started to say some blasphemous things towards the end. I mean, he really, you know, there, there was this sort of tower made of sand built on a foundation of sand. And the second that, you know, um, that I identified um, what was going on, it just completely crumbled, you know. And then he sort of admitted that he was an agnostic still. He didn't say, well, I, I am a Christian. He just admitted that he was agnostic. He said he always has been, always will be. So it's just staggering to see that somebody would, would openly lie about being a Christian and being saved. I mean, it's just, it's appalling. You know, it's grievous to me. 
but then to still plan to go back to this church to to go there probably I don't know this Sunday coming up to to then go to that church and just sit in there like a a hypocrite and a liar how can you do that how can you lie to yourself and to the people around you don't go if you're not a Christian don't waste your time you know not planning on on approaching the truth and and being open to it and learning of it if you go there and and you don't actually care anyway and you have no intention of seeking the truth then what are you doing there you know it's just you know as i said it really just grieves my heart it really really grieves me you know so I, i told this person and i suspect our relationship is fractured quite badly for the foreseeable future um but i've done what i believe to be the right thing you know i've told them uh the truth um you know as as is written in the bible you know i didn't say this is my i said to this guy many times this is not me speaking this is not my opinion i'm not you know i'm not saying this to you this is what the lord is saying to you through his inerrant word his his holy bible you know, you, if you if you've got a problem, it's not with me. It's with God. It's with what He's written. And again, this guy then said, "Oh well, you know, this was written by men, you know, and uh, liable to, you know." And and he just started saying all sorts of heretical, blasphemous stuff. And and this is why I know he's not saved because he just caved in completely. Caved in completely. He didn't try and defend that position. He just caved in and then attacked the Christian faith. And I just. You know, I despair. I really despair. I don't know even what to do. But all I know is I've given this guy the truth. I've told him about salvation and I've rebuked him. I've rebuked him. And, uh, you know, but I have corrected him. And what he chooses to do after this, and I've told him, you need to remember this conversation. You know, and I want him, I desperately want him to get saved. So I haven't given up on him, but I've had to rebuke and reprove him. And what he does after this is... um, I have no idea. I have no idea. It's troubling. It's deeply troubling. So, um, you know, I just wanted to share this with you guys. Um, You know, it becomes clear sometimes that um, when you take a stand for the Lord, when and especially when you take a stand for the Bible, for what God says, you're going to come into um, conflict with carnal people, people who claim to be Christians. And all they're really doing is taking advantage of, of those that, well, I hope that they're Christians also, but this is the problem. This is the problem. I suspect there's a lot of people in church that are really agnostic and just want to get out and be in some sort of social club and, and, and don't even care about the truth and, and think that because they go to a church, they're just ticking a box and that it's part of their good works package that's going to get them to heaven. And it's just frightening, guys. It's frightening you know and i really lament you know the the state of the most of the modern church from what i've seen it's full of people like this the church that i was in i got out of it because they're not a soul winning church you know they're going to have people like this in their church um they're not going to try and win them they're not going to try and tell them they're not going to try and lead them to salvation you know it's frightening it's really frightening to see this so I just wanted to bring this to you guys that you know false converts are out there and I don't seek to go about challenging them but they're out there and when you start talking truth to them from the bible not your own opinion you know thus saith the lord once you start telling them the truth you'll see it will either convict them or they're going to rebel against it and if they're not true christians they're going to rebel you know they're going to show their real colors again so you know, I just wanted to share this message, a little frustrating, um, but more than anything, it just grieves me to know that somebody is is willing to go to hell. You know, I mean, this guy even said that, you know, in order to quote unquote be with his wife, willing to go to hell. Just lunacy, just lunacy. So I'd be interested to hear your thoughts, guys, on forced converts and, and these kind of situations. And um, yeah, let me know. Thanks very much. God bless.